Hey there, thanks for listening and welcome to the Marketing Matchmaker Podcast. If you're looking to grow your business, increase your revenue and scale your impact, all while staying true to who you are and the people you serve, this is the show for you. I'm Jennifer Tamborski, digital marketing strategist, fractional CMO, and founder of Virtual Marketing Experts. My team and I work with six and seven figure coaches, consultants, and online entrepreneurs who are tired of playing the guru game of one size fits all marketing. They're ready to create a business and marketing strategy that actually builds relationships with their ideal clients, creates massive shifts in their business and rapidly increases their revenue. As your marketing matchmaker, I'm going to help you find the perfect marketing match for you. This show will teach you how to reach your ideal client, connect with your audience, build that perfect relationship, and generate more revenue. All through a process I like to call dating your ideal client. Now let's go have some fun. Hey everyone, welcome back to The Marketing Matchmaker. I'm your host, Jennifer Tamborski. We are have been diving into the virtual marketing experts marketing process over the last couple of episodes. So in the last two episodes, we covered our introduction phase, which is all about the strategy, learning who it is that you work with, how it is that they're going to get from start to finish, and really designing out your budget for your marketing. The next episode is about the flirting phase, which is all about warming up your audience with valuable content, creating visibility. So if you haven't had a chance to listen, I'd encourage you to head over to those episodes and give it a listen. Today, we're going to talk about step three, which is all about dating. This is really about lead generation. And this is where most people start when it comes to their marketing. The reality is, We need steps one and two in order to make step three most effective. Just like in a romantic relationship, we need to begin to connect with our audience before we're able to ask them for a date. Relationship marketing is, well, it's all about building relationships. So skipping out on the introduction and the flirting phase will often make the dating and commitment phases more difficult. As I said, most people start at this process. And this is all about your funnel. I want to take a minute and really talk about your funnel. What is a funnel? Everyone has and should have a funnel. When you are scaling your business to six and seven figures, it becomes even more important to have a funnel. All a funnel means is a customer journey. It is designed to take them from introduction through commitment so that they have a simple process to go through. And quite honestly, this is where step one, the introduction phase, is so super important. Knowing how to design your funnel, your customer journey, really requires some time. And if you spend that time in the introduction phase in designing this so that it is most effective for your ideal client, then asking someone for their name and their email address in place of something of value becomes simple. That is all your funnel is. Starting at the top of your funnel is really asking for somebody's name and email address in place of something of value. That may be a download, it may be a quiz, it may be a webinar or some type of training. It may be what we call a micro offer, a small investment in something that you offer them. All of those are your top of the funnel type of products and getting people onto your email list through that really helps to warm them up to the next step. Now, speaking of warming up, you put time and effort into step one to create and design that funnel and then you put time and effort into step two to create visibility 
to warm them up. That really helps with your lead generation. You see, most often people are driving cold traffic to their landing page and, and asking them to give them their email address for whatever webinar or download or whatever the item is. Cold traffic is really people who have no idea who you are. They don't know what you do. They may not even know they have a problem that you can solve. And they absolutely don't know that you are the solution to whatever their problem might be. So driving cold traffic to your landing page and asking them to step into your funnel can be more costly than driving warm traffic, which are those people who already have had a touch point with you and your brand. That's really where that visibility in step two comes into play. The cost to get them on your email list will generally be lower because they've already warmed up to you a bit. And they'll be more qualified. They'll be more ready to take the next step in your funnel. Warm traffic really is um, helpful when you are sending out ads or creating a system to take people from introduction to commitment. So while you are sending traffic, to your landing page, both cold and warm, warm traffic is going to end up costing you less. If we're talking about paid ads, which let's be honest, most coaches, consultants, and online course creators, they're gonna be using Facebook ads. It's one of the number one platforms out there in order to run ads for that B2B and B2C market. Almost everybody is on Facebook, so running ads in Facebook is going to be the first step when it comes to getting people into your audience, to building your audience and growing your audience. Understanding what it costs in order to convert people from your cold traffic to somebody on your list that you can warm up or from your warm traffic to somebody on your list that you can sell is an important part of this process. And really, it's something that you're going to want to focus on in the introduction phase, really designing your budget and how much each lead is going to cost you. More importantly, how many leads do you need in order to meet your sales goal? Because that is going to help you to meet those sales goals every month. So what's the maximum amount you can afford to pay in this step for a lead? As you get more data, you're going to get a better understanding on how much you need to pay for a lead. But when you're first starting out, you kind of can go off of industry standards, right? So right now, um, if you're, we're talking a whole lot of uh, business to business to business or business to consumer, are, are going to be a different cost projection. Um, if you are a coach who coaches coaches, that's going to be business to business. If you are a coach who is focusing on the consumer industry um, that's not necessarily aware of what you do, that's business to consumer. And those leads, those leads are generally cheaper but the sales conversions are generally lower. It's harder to get consumers to relinquish money than it is businesses, though a business to business lead costs more, your sales conversions will be higher and easier to convert. So back to industry standards. If you're talking about a download, a PDF, um, a infographic, something along those lines, a quiz, those kind of things, you can on average expect to pay somewhere between one and three dollars a lead. Um, A lot of times you can get them below one dollar, depends on your audience, depends on whether you've warmed them up appropriately, um, you can work towards getting it below a dollar. 
If you're talking about something that's a little more time commitment bound, or you're asking for more of a commitment from them, like a webinar or possibly a micro offer where you're asking for them to pay for something before they get the next step, those are going to be more expensive. And depending on how you set this up, it could be anywhere from three to eight dollars per lead or for a micro offer, it may be even more than that, somewhere between the eight and twelve dollars range. That's all really dependent on how well you've set up all of the information in your visibility. So one of the reasons that visibility is so important in creating this type of um, marketing is because you can use the people who, let's just use video views, for example. You put out a two to five minute video, um, you put a little money behind it through Facebook ads, those people that ha have watched two to five minutes or more of your video are more likely to take the next step in your funnel. They're already warmed up to who you are and they're already, they have some level of commitment to following you. That can help really decrease the amount of cost per lead when you are starting to drive them to your lead magnet. So that all brings us to where you're budgeting and how you're spending this money. Reality is this piece of your marketing, your lead generations, your dating process is where most people spend the majority of their budget. Now, if you have an e-commerce store, you're probably going to spend the majority of your budget selling directly to sales. But as a coach, consultant, online course creator, this portion of your free download is where the majority of your spend is going to be. Probably around 70, 75% of it should go in here. Another five to 10% should go into that visibility section. And the rest gets spent in retargeting, which is in the commitment phase. And we'll tap into that in the next episode. Understanding how your money is divided out in this process really can help you to effectively use the dating your ideal client process when you are driving traffic to your sales funnel. So there are a couple of things to look at when it comes to your lead generation strategy. Are you testing enough? Here's something that I want you to realize when it comes to lead generation. It is better to focus on one funnel until you've got it working. It is better to focus on getting more people, more eyes on that funnel and making small tweaks to it than scrapping it and starting over. Scrapping and starting over costs time, it costs money. The reality is if you spent the time in the introduction phase to really understand your ideal client and what they need, the lead generation phase is all about just tweaking that. Maybe the messaging needs to be tweaked a little bit. Maybe the ads, the creative, the, the copy need tweaking. All of those things are going to make your funnel more profitable and allows you to work on perfecting that funnel. Once you have that funnel perfected, then you can start worrying about adding more things. The whole point of dating your ideal client is really to take them from introduction through commitment in each step and making that process effective working to reach your six and seven figures in that process is incredibly important. I also want you to look at your funnel, your lead generation, and really ask yourself, what does success in this process mean? How many people do I need to get into sign up for this lead magnet before they are ready to take that next step? Understanding your sales cycle, and I know we've gone in, over it in a couple of other episodes, is incredibly important so that you know you may need to have 
10, 15, 20, 100, 1,000 people sign up for your lead generation in order to hit your sales goals. So becoming aware of what success means in this step will really help you to facilitate and take this process to the next level. Thank you for listening to the Marketing Matchmaker Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, I would love to hear your feedback. Please head over to iTunes and leave a review so we can hear from you. And if you are a coach, consultant, or online course creator who are looking to grow your business, increase your income, and scale your impact, connect with me at yourmarketingmatchmaker.com. I look forward to hearing from you.